be back bringing you another episode of GAQA Tuesday where I answer all of your ghost adventures related paranormal questions that you ask me all up on the Facebook. Now I know I failed at life and did not even post anything about it till this morning which I, oh, I absolutely hate waiting that long but here lately my life has been so nut back crazy with like my kids getting the flu and then me getting back on track from that and now entering finals week for school and finishing up with that. <sighs> but you guys now have my attention 24 seven because I am on a break from school until I start back in two more weeks uh, to finish one of four eight week sessions that I have to finish before I finally, finally, finally graduate. I cannot wait. But Point is, I'm here, I'm all prettied up, kinda. I have a hoodie on, huh? I even put earrings in, so I have my earrings in, so you know that I'm not mad at anybody right now because no one's holding them for me. But we are gonna get right into it because we have a lot to cover, and what I hope to be a tiny amount of time, I'm gonna work on cutting these videos down because, let's face it, I don't like watching a 25 minute video on YouTube, so I don't want you guys to have to do it either. <sighs> But our first question makes me giggle because of the conversations my fellow admins and I have been having today. And I know that I'm going to be the butt of all the jokes for the rest of the evening, but it's completely fine. I can hang. Kathy Drake asks, has any of the guys gotten hurt while doing an investigation? And if so, what happened? Now, we all bump into things and fall over crap, or in my case, air. And the GAC is no different. They have tripped over themselves, they've ran into doors, they've hit their heads on pipes. Aaron has tripped over the same pipe like six times in one episode. And the worst one that I remember seeing was when Nick fell at Penhurst over the chair that was in the dark hallway and he like cut his arm all up with glass and dirt and crap in it. And they had to like on the fly go get the first aid kit and get him all sewn up. I feel their pain. Like I said, I am the biggest klutz on the planet. I will trip over thin air. I will make up something in my head and trip over it. I have dropped my phone on my face. I have broken my foot and had to wear a boot for six weeks because I dropped my phone on my foot. I'm officially gonna sue Otterbox because they make them too heavy and that's my excuse and that's what I'm sticking to. K, K. But in all reality, I am a total klutz. How I was a, a successful competitive gymnast for like 15 years, I don't know. Um, because I am the biggest klutz on the planet. But beside the point, yes, they have gotten hurt on investigation. I don't think anything has ever been like super critical or super bad, but yes, they have gotten injured on investigations before and some of them were like health related injuries like if you remember King's Tavern Billy kind of had that heart scare um he just was kind of out of it and then he felt like he was kind of having a heart attack like he had chest pains and his hands were tingling and it was a really scary situation but so it does happen it's bound to happen they're walking around in the dark even with night vision you can't always see everything like in your line of vision you're not scanning the room because then you're going to end up hitting something so yes, they have gotten hurt. Nothing critical, thank goodness, but it has happened. Moving on, our next question. Oh, this one is from one of our wonderful admins, Chris Nelson, and he asks me, are there any locations that the guys have investigated, gotten good evidence, but refuse to go back to, and why? That's a really good question, and the first place that pops into my head is Bobby Mackey's Music World. As we all know, Nick and Aaron and Zach went there twice to investigate. They went there once for like a group wide event. And even though Nick has ran his mouth and decided to go back, we all know Zach and Aaron have not, nor will they ever go back to Bobby Mackey's. They have no desire. There's just too many bad things that have happened in that place for them to ever even think about like going back to it. Um, another place that I probably can suspect is not on their like, let's go back tomorrow list would be Ireland. We all know in the Halloween special, Aaron and Zach especially got into some pretty heavy, heavy stuff while they were investigating the Hellfire Club in, England, in Ireland and 
Aaron has flat out said that he felt like he was touched by Satan himself. We all seen how Aaron reacted. He was not good. I straight up ugly cried watching that episode because I felt so absolutely horrible for him when he was just kind of having his moment with Zach in the woods. And even Zach said it. In that moment, it was not about the show. I was watching, you know, my brother fall apart. And so it's just that family bond that they have that is so tight that when one of them hurt, the other person hurts. So I doubt that Ireland is like on their top five of I'm going to go there tomorrow list. Good question, yo. I love it. Moving right skittily along. Christina Brown asked a question that probably should have really went into what should I do Wednesday, but when I read it, I kind of read it while reading another question, and then I got confused because my ADD kicked in, and then someone asked me something, and then I just lost, I lost it. So it ended up in the GAQA what, QA file, but I can kind of break it down into both. So Christina, I'm going to answer your question here with a Ghost Adventures twist, and then I'm going to touch more on it tomorrow in our What Should I Do Wednesday video. But her question was, what is the longest place or structure that has been documented as being haunted? Now, putting the Ghost Adventures twist on it, I have to go with the Bell Witch Cave. That haunting has went on forever and a day, and we all know how cray cray cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, that investigation itself was like into the cave itself, and then they went into the house, and they had all these people, and it was madness. So I immediately flashed to the Bell Witch Cave as one of those like epic haunts that has lasted forever and there's documented evidence forever from this haunting. As I said, tomorrow I'm going to go into it a little bit more and do some research about maybe where like the longest haunt is generally speaking. But I have to, for the Ghost Adventures purposes, say that it was the Bell Witch Cave. Whew! Good question. Sorry that my ADD kicked in and it kind of went in two different places, but I saved it, I think. Now, our last question is from last week, so I don't have who wrote it down, but it was one of those questions that kind of, I think they may have been kind of looking for an argument. I could have been wrong, but you're going to kind of get one anyway, because that's just kind of how I roll. And since everybody likes it so much when I get a little, like, sassy, um, I figured that it would only be fitting if I added a little sass to this video. Now, the question that was asked was, why do they hunt ghosts? Okay, first of all, they don't hunt ghosts. That's that other show that we don't talk about. Okay? The GAC works really hard and uses countless pieces of scientific based equipment to get the best possible evidence they can for themselves and for us. They want answers just like we do. They want to know exactly what the paranormal realm is just like we do. And so we turn to them because of their scientific evidence. We don't care if you were scared. We don't seek to be scared. We seek to have answers. And that's exactly what they do. And so when I came across this question and I was like, they were like, why do they hunt ghosts? I'm like, they don't hunt ghosts. They're searching for answers. They're looking for proof of the paranormal, which we all know they've gotten plenty of. We wouldn't be sitting here gagaing over the show if it was crap. So they're doing their job on, the, on that front, but they are not posers. They don't try to get the biggest piece of evidence or the best piece of evidence. If they wanted to do that, then the episode that I've labeled as an epic fail, not on their part, but just like in general, from last week, we, we would have never seen because there was nothing there. It was point blank proof that they were just cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. So... If they wanted just evidence, that episode would have never been seen, but they didn't want evidence. They wanted us to see the other side. They wanted us to see how people can get kind of wrapped up in the paranormal, I hate the word fad, but that's kind of what it is in a sense because it is so popular. But the one, the diehard people, the people who eat, sleep, and breathe this kind of stuff, 
really appreciate it when they take that time to make that known that hey some people are just crazy and they just want attention and they're gonna go to great lengths to get it and then there are some buildings that are insanely freaking haunted and they're going to do everything they can to document that evidence and not only are they documenting that evidence but they're giving those spirits a voice they're letting them know that hey we are here to listen to you we are here to help you we are here to sympathize with you and if you are mean and nasty we're here to help you know, get rid of you and so I appreciate the GEC and the fact that they do that. They don't work to hunt ghosts. They're not ghostbusters. They don't want to put them in a jar and label them with a name like Larry and stick them on a freaking shelf. They want to capture evidence to prove that those people are there or those spirits are there and then return that to us to help us become believers. And they're doing a pretty damn good job of it if I do say so myself. So. I had to get a little sassy and go on a little rant because it touched a nerve that is not okay with me. <sighs> but that is all I have for GAQA Tuesday. Like I said, with the craziness of my life, I did not get this posted as early as I wanted to, so you may have not gotten your questions in. Don't fret. You can always submit them starting now, and I will write them down and answer them next week. And I will also be back tomorrow for What Should I Do Wednesday, where I'm going to answer all of your general paranormal-related questions. I have quite a list going so far, so keep those coming. And if I don't get those all answered tomorrow, I will answer those next week as well. Until then, stay happy, stay healthy, stay warm. Much love and hugs 